So this is the page as we see it right now in the project we created at the end of the last section. A empty page here, Angular the complete guide, we reach it at localhost 4200. This is where our development server hosted by the CLI or spun up by the CLI will host our Angular application. Now the content we see here can be changed by going to the app component HTML file in our app folder. And in here we can output some text, let's say um, in the app component here in a h3 tag, a normal HTML tag therefore. If we save this, we will see it here and it automatically has the bootstrap text style and so on because we added bootstrap at the end of the last section too. But whilst it might seem kind of obvious that we see it here, it is also kind of strange. How does our browser or how does the server hosting our app know that it should render the content of app component HTML here. You could argue it's the only component we have right now and we will take a closer look at components soon. But that is not the reason. And actually this is not the file served by the server. Instead the index.html file here is served by the server. And remember that I told you that Angular is a framework which allows you to create single page application. This is the single page which is served. The index.html file. Now if we have a look at this file, we see this is a normal HTML file. We define the title we could see on the tab in the browser here. And the body of this file is very interesting. Here we get this app root thing with loading dot 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 in between. Now clearly we don't see loading dot 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 here. So somehow this index HTML file seems to have changed. And it did. App root here of course is not a default HTML element, instead it is one of our own components. We will soon dive into how we create our own components, but the CLI created one for us, the root component of our application, the component which will tie together our whole application in the end. And all the files in the app folder here, which have component in their name, so these files are related to this component. I will go into more detail about these files in one of the next lectures. For now, let's take a closer look at the app component.ts file, the TypeScript file here. Here you can see that we have this add component decorator. This seems to be important. But more importantly right now, you see that there we have this selector property, which assigns a string as a value and this string holds app root. Now this clearly is the same text as in our index.html file and this actually is the information Angular needed to be able to replace this part here in this index.html file with the template of this component, the component having this selector and the template of this component simply is the content here in this app component HTML file. Now whilst I will dive deeper into how to create components and how to configure them, this is what basically happens at the startup. Though the missing information is how is Angular triggered? How is it kicked off to actually run over our body here of this um, index.html file? And the answer is in the final index.html file getting served in the browser and we can verify this by inspecting the source code here. We got a couple of script imports at the end. These are injected by the CLI automatically. So that is why we don't see it here in the raw index.html file. Here we don't have any script imports. But whenever this ng serve process rebuilds our project, it will create bundles, JavaScript script bundles, and automatically add the right imports in the index.html file. A little convenience functionality for us. So in the final file, these script imports here are present and these script imports will contain our own code too. So these script files are therefore executed and they are actually the first code to be executed and that is just something you have to keep in mind is the code we write in our main.ts file. That is why it's called main. This is the first code which gets executed. Let's have a closer look at it then. Here you see that we get a couple of imports, then we check if we are in production mode or not to basically turn off some warning messages, I can tell you that. But most importantly here, this line, this now bootstraps 
starts our Angular application by passing a app module to this method. And app module refers to this file here. Now, if we have a look at this file here, we actually see that somehow we kind of like with the component have the strange add thing here. I will dive into this in a couple of lectures too. But most importantly for now, here we got this bootstrap array, which basically lists all the components which should be known to Angular at the point of time it analyzes our index.html file. And here the circle closes because here we reference our app component. So Angular gets started, this main.ts file gets started. There we bootstrap an Angular application and we pass this module as an argument. In this module, we tell Angular, hey, there is this app component which you should know when you try to start yourself. And Angular now analyzes the app component, reads the setup we pass here, and therefore knows this selector, app root. And now Angular is able to handle app root in the index.html file, and it knows, all right, this is the selector I know. You told me that I should know it because it was listed in this bootstrap array in the app module, this component. So now I know that here I should insert the app component and the app component happens to have some HTML code, a template attached to it, which is this h3 tag. And this is how the Angular application starts here. This is why we see what we see. Now there was a load of information regarding the app startup, but it's key to understand how this starts with this information. We can now proceed and dive deeper into how components actually work, what they are, how we can create our own ones, and what this app module here does in detail. So let's move on.